And this paper helps, to, uh, helps us to understand how the, um, the very structure of our cells is there, not just to provide structure for the cell, but communication to the physiology of our body. And the molecules that we're made of are there to provide information. Um, this is a concept that we've started to understand years ago in functional medicine, but this paper really is, um, it helps to really uh, make, it, uh, make sense of it. He describes that the phospholipid uh, hypothesis of depression is promising and it can be supported by numerous data on the effects of omega-3s on immunomodulation, signal transduction, neurotransmission, and neuroprotection. Indeed, omega-3s are safe, important in health, and beneficial for depressed patients in various populations. So he talks a little bit about depression and talks about this concept of, concept of psychosomatic affliction and how that we now see that there's a very real um, physio physiological or physical basis to this in, in our patients. One of the things that uh, helped us to understand that psychosomatic afflictions are real is when we started using cytokines for therapeutics. Um, a variety of cytokines have been tested for their therapeutic value. Some of them are simply too toxic to be used. Certain cytokines, uh, I, uh, uh, like um, certain interleukins, if injected, will cause psychosis within minutes, for instance. And this is at picogram quantities. They're very, very potent. Um, certain uh, cytokines have come into uh, very common use, like interferons. Uh, patients with hepatitis C, for instance, usually are offered treatment with interferon, uh, pegylated interferon and ribavirin, and that treatment can offer a cure for a number of patients with hepatitis C. So it's, you know, it's a real breakthrough treatment. However, people that uh, undergo this therapy with, um, say, interferons, begin to experience many of the afflictions that we see in our psychosomatically afflicted population, um, things like fatigue, asthenia, headache, GI symptoms, very similar to uh, irritable bowel syndrome, psychomotor slowing, insomnia, irritability, arthralgias, you know, vague muscle aches and pains, abdominal pain, anorexia, anxiety, poor concentration, very similar to the kinds of things that people uh, um, tell us when they have conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia. And in major depressive disorder, interestingly, uh, virtually all of those same symptoms are present very commonly as well. So this paper describes how the condition of our cell membranes or the balance of um, structural lipids within our cell membranes can play a very, very central role in um, perpetuating this, um, this uh, symptomatology that would create a state of unwellness and, um, and poor health in a variety of conditions. So for instance, you have your cell membranes you have various uh, constituents from your diet, uh, maybe like DHA, EPA. And uh, if there's something that perturbs the cell membrane, like inflammation, infection, or cytokines, that causes um, destruction of certain cell membranes and liberation of their, um, uh, their constituents, uh, arachidonic acid, EPA, DHA, uh, can either create an anti-inflammatory effect or an inflammatory effect and leads to virtually all of these typical symptoms. So basically we can think of fish oil as kind of a mind-body interface and that um, if you use these as nutrients, expect over time, if you're using them adequately, that you're going to see a number of symptoms begin to uh, gradually but steadily resolve. And interestingly, uh, here's a study um, from the New England Journal of Medicine from a while ago. Antidepressants lead to remission in less than 50%. And in fact, somatic manifestations are the most common symptoms of major depression. Um, um, so I, um, I essentially um, am trying to illustrate how important it is that we don't take that kind of jaded view with our patients. Patients' uh, suffering has to be... Um, we have to believe them that their suffering is real and that these vague somatic symptoms, whether it's major depression or chronic fatigue syndrome or even something we can't put some sort of neat label on, that, uh, that these symptoms are real. 
and that um, omega-3 fatty acids may very well play a very substantial role in helping a wide range of these uh, patients.